Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third day of MMVC19. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and you can see our speaker. Our speaker, second speaker of the day, is Poonam Bora, who's coming to us from India. You can read a bit about her from uh, the screen. What I can tell you about uh, Poonam, whom I met in 2015 in New Delhi, is that she is an amazing person. And meeting um, someone on that you know online face to face uh, was amazing. She's very passionate. She's a passionate teacher. She's a passionate learner. She loves to share what she learns, and she's not afraid to try out new things. So Punam, I'm really happy that you're here. I miss you, and um, I'm looking forward to your session. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm going to stop sharing so you can start sharing uh, your presentation. Thank you, Dr. Nelly, for such kind words. Uh, this is for everyone. If you want to add to the chat, go to everyone. Unless you want to um, chat with uh, a specific person, make sure that it's uh, that you have everyone there. Is it going okay, Poonam? Uh, yeah, I'm opening the PowerPoint. Okay. You need to open it, and then there is the, excuse me, the share button at the bottom. So hello, everyone, once again. Uh, for joining our second session of the day. If you're having any problems at any time, uh, you can uh, send me a private message to let me know. Okay, so we're starting with screen sharing. Yes, I can see it. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Nelly. You have spoken such kind words for me. I am very, very grateful to you, rather, that you have been giving opportunity each time to share my thoughts and my experiences about what all I have learned. Can you put this, Poonam, sorry, can you put this in the presentation mode? Okay, should I do that? Is that yes, so we can see um, it full screen and not see the left side of it. Yes, exactly. Is that fine? Perfect. And I'll mute my mic. Yes. I can start now? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I have made this, I, just to begin with, to give you a little background, I have made this presentation keeping in view uh, the Indian classroom and the Indian education system. And I have uh, deliberately titled it as, Let's Not Learn, But Feel the Content. Here I would like to say that um, let's not simply adopt and adapt what we know and know how to do it and rush to make it happen under changing circumstances. We should work with passion towards making a productive change in the world of tech-driven learning environment. We all know the ineffectiveness of our old school methods of conducting a classroom. It simply does not work for today's plugged in students. Though the educators have developed and delivered student centered uh, lessons, yet the learning outcomes are low. I'm talking in terms of Indian context only. So here I'm going to share my understanding and my observation about the technology and the teaching strategy. The teaching strategy that works for the learners and the technology that work and react like humans. So the title given is, let's not learn but feel the content. So personalized and machine learning are made for each other. So Presentation is about personalized learning. It is about machine learning and how the two can be <clears throat> integrated to make an effect, an impact on the education. If we look at the institutions today, 
most of the educational institutions are grappled with critical challenges of providing quality education at scale and making it accessible to it is mainly due to you know uh, infrastructural problems mainly due to limited resources mainly due to time constraint so it is the resource constraint time constraint uh, and uh, in uh, and accessibility that is making the quality of education not up to the expectations it's not only institutions even the teachers the teaching today has become very very complex and very very challenging every teacher whether new or veteran finds it difficult to balance the conflicting roles and the different expectations of management of parents of learners as the teachers today are required to not only look into the academic performance of the learners but also need to organize various programs events and i have to do a lot of administrative work they need to upgrade themselves professionally and evolve different strategies so that the different learning needs can be fulfilled specifically in today's uh, uh, technology oriented world so it becomes very challenging for the teachers but never mind the teachers though there are endless challenges one come across countless opportunities to to change to adapt to ever changing new environment i would suggest instead of complaining begin to love challenges begin to love a dynamic classroom begin to love the innovative strategies make the content delivery very very interesting and very very interactive so for doing all that don't always put focus on student centered approach have uh, don't put sorry don't put focus on teacher centered approach have a focus on student centered approach and the best approach although there are so many approaches the best approach would be to go for personalized learning and use high tech material because that is the need of the hour so personalized learning and high tech material is going to do wonders today so let's try to understand what exactly we mean by personalized learning though uh, it must be used in many schools in all over the globe but in india it is still not used so effectively as it should have been maybe people are not even much aware of the complete concept of personalized learning so i would like to just discuss about it personalized learning what does it mean it's nothing but you have to adjust the pace of learning of a student and you need to adjust your instructional approach as per the needs whether it is learning objectives whether it is creating a content whether it is having instructional approaches everything and the sequencing of the content it's very important aspect of teaching learning process has to be as per the needs of the learner and it is important because all the learners are different and have different learning needs there may be so many terms one may come across which are used for you uh, used as synonymous to personalized learning but it is not the fact uh, adaptive learning is considered as personalized learning it is not so because here if we talk of adaptive learning it is only adaptation of the digital as well as the human resources as per the requirement of the learner if we talk of individualized learner individualized learning it means that the pace of learning has to be adjusted in order to meet his needs if we talk of differentiated learning 
it is nothing but approach to learning has to be adjusted as per the needs and if we talk of competency based learning here the learner has to uh, demonstrate his ability of competence that includes whether he is able to apply and create knowledge and develop certain skills and dispositions so all these concepts are not same they are not synonymous but they are related to personalized learning so in one sentence personalized learning actually means that adjustment has to be done with respect to resources with respect to pace with respect to approach and with respect to the competency of the learner how do we do that how do we do this personalized learning it seems to be very interesting but it is very cumbersome too it seems uh, it's very complicated too i can just suggest few steps that one must take it is important it is very much important in uh, in indian context um, because uh, the learning levels are very very low and it has to be the learning levels need to be improved so personalized learning is the need of the hour how should we do it every teacher has to find out the starting point of every individual that means how much the learner knows and how much he doesn't know and define that particular starting point from where the course content has to be developed accordingly once the starting point is decided another thing when you decide starting point it is not same for all the individuals every individual learner will have a different starting point so for every individual learner you need to set a goal relating to that you need to prepare learning modalities relating to that and when i talk of learning modalities it is the most and most important aspect of the complete plan it is nothing but it is the strategies that you have to decide it is the content that you have to decide which should suit the needs of a learner and when you are making your plan when you are making your strategy you must include the passions the interests of a student it is going to create lot of interest with him so that he can work on the similar lines and then once you have made this you should involve the student you need to teach him how to track his own progress you need to assess for his learning he can also assess the learner can also assess his learning and assessment is possible when you compare his present performance with the prior performance and on that basis you need to build one on one dialogue to provide him the feedback and then you are required to compile the student profile share it with all the stakeholders and you need to repeat this whole process this process has to be repeated every term every year so that you are in a position to have a cumulative record of the learner it seems very complicated but believe me once you start working on these lines you will love it and most of the problems get sorted out automatically now this is the plan that you have to do and how actually it has to be implemented it is implemented by collecting lot of data data relating to the academic performance of the learner about his grades data relating to his assessment whether tests within the um, terms term test or the final examinations or any other kind of a test that he has appeared in his demographics his participation in various activities and various programs his attendance his behavior and observation by the teachers observation by the students and how is he doing overall so look at the kind of 
data that one has to collect in order to make personalized learning a success. It is all data-based. I'm repeating and emphasizing it is all data-based. One has to compile, collect and compile the complete data of a learner on various aspects. And when you are com compiling, when you are collecting the data, make sure that the data is complete, the data is relevant, relevant as per the requirement. It is secure and trustworthy so that it can be communicated to the stakeholders and it must be used by the educators to improve upon the performance of the learner. I'm repeating, every teacher is required to collect as much data as possible because it is analysis is done on the basis of data. Improvement is possible only on the basis of data. So implementing personalized learning seems to be complicated because of data collection, but it is very, very important. And once you do it, you will love doing it. Yes, teachers need to collect data. Look at the situation. I'm once again talking about Indian classrooms. In an Indian classroom, there are on an average 45 to 50 students in urban areas. If it is rural areas, then the classroom is entirely a different concept because you don't get homogeneous group, you get heterogeneous group. But let's talk of urban areas where there are, right now, let's talk of urban areas, if there are 45 to 50 students in one class, teacher does not have to take just one class. A teacher is required to take two, three, four classes. That means 150 to 200 students she has to handle. That means if she goes for personalized learning, which is the need of the hour, she is required to have compilation of data for almost 150 students which is to be repeated each term and look at the kind of job look at the kind of data that she will be compiling and she will be handling it's not easy so at the beginning of the school year you can see the picture of a teacher and by the end of the school year how she feels She's all bogged down with a kind of data. And I would suggest that it has to be done. It has to be made a process, a practice. It's not a product. It has to be a practice to be done by all the teachers all the time in case you want to have an improvement in the learning outcomes today and expectations are different. So what should be done? There are two extreme situations. On one hand, look at the urgency of improving the performance, educational academic performance. And on the other hand, look at the, the massification of education that is to be done. So these two needs to be balanced. How is it possible? It's not possible by a single teacher, if she's taking two to three classes, which every teacher is taking. So best option is invest. Invest in the technology. Invest in the latest technology. And the moment we talk of latest technology, it's artificial intelligence, it's machine learning, that comes to your mind. These have created a huge buzz, not only in India, but all over the world. And it is considered that this is going to be the next level of technological revolution, where machine meets human intelligence and human knowledge. That means the machines will be filled with human intelligence to understand the level of human intelligence. It sounds interesting, but at the same time, it's complicated too. 
if we look around carefully, we find that these technologies have already become a crucial part of our daily lives. And we don't even realize that. We are using it so extensively. Facebook. Everyone has an account on Facebook. It suggests the names by identifying the face for tagging a person. It offers relevant pictures to make, a, to make an album. What is it? How is it doing it? It's machine learning. Look at the shopping sites, whether it is Amazon, Flipkart, Snapdeal, or any other such site. Every shopping site suggests probable preferences as per one's previous searches and browsing history. What is it? How do they do it? It's machine learning. For music lovers, Spotify prepares playlist on command. For movie lovers, Netflix pro provides you the option of kind of films you should watch based on your previous history of the kind of films you have been watching. What is it? Machine learning. Alexa, everyone knows it's a new concept. It answers your questions and acts accordingly. We are also aware of Siri and Cortana. These are considered as pers digital personal assistants on iOS, on Android, on Windows, and help to find relevant information when requested using a voice. How are they doing it? It's all machine learning, where they gather data, refine the data based on past participation with them. So, if machine learning is so much involved in our lives, it would be underestimating the power of these technologies if they are not thought for educational advancement. And there are countless reasons for that. When we talk of artificial intelligence, when we talk of machine learning, we are generally not clear and we keep changing, keep using these words interchangeably. So let's try to understand a little bit about what machine learning means or what artificial intelligence is. They seem to be similar but there, there is a stark difference between these two. Artificial intelligence, it's the ability of the machine to think, to learn, and perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, like visual perception, like speech recognition, like decision-making skills. <coughs> Sorry. And there is a misconception that artificial intelligence is a system. It is not a system. It is implemented in the same system. Examples I've just discussed, Cortana, Siri, Alexa. Clear-cut examples of artificial intelligence who use voice. Machine learning. It's an app it is not artificial intelligence exactly. It is an application of artificial intelligence, <coughs> sorry, that uses statistical techniques, which focuses on the development of computer programs that can access data, devise learning algorithms. Algorithm is nothing but a set of rules to be followed that do learning automatically without human intervention. I repeat, machine learning, it is an application of artificial intelligence. It uses statistical techniques, which focuses on the development of computer programs that can access data, devise learning algorithms, and that do the learning automatically without human intervention. Underline, without human intervention. So machine learning is set to create virtual human-like characters who can think, 
who can act, who can react, who can interact in a natural way and responding to and using both verbal and non-verbal communication. Deep learning is also talked about along with artificial intelligence and machine learning. It is called deep learning because it uses many layers to learn the levels of representation and abstraction that make sense of data, like images, sounds, and text. But we need to concentrate on machine learning because this is what is relevant for us. So we say, since personalized learning uses a lot of, requires a lot of data, since machine learning uses a lot of data, so it can be said that both are made for each other. Education is, it's a means to develop minds, while machine learning makes the learning faster and at one's own pace. What else one can expect? What else one needs? I think that's the best combination to be adopted in today's time. So let's now see how actually personalized learning and machine learning are integrated to enhance learning. It's a virtual assistant. It is considered to be a virtual assistant because it's not a human, it's a machine. So eliminates biases and can deal. It thinks and acts like human, so it can deal with students professionally, keeping in view the differential aptitudes, keeping in view the different personalities of students. So there are two parts to it. <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, teachers and students. By using algorithms, machines can receive the data, analyze it, and then produce the output. For example, a virtual assistant can design the presentations on the basis of data you feed, can make projects for the specific learners on the basis of data you feed, provide exam training as per your request, can remind you the test dates, conduct tests, provide feedback about your progress. Not only this, it also focuses on those areas that need to be further explored in order to enhance learning. So a reliable virtual assistant helps not only the teachers, but also the students to do their tasks in a shorter time and also helps them in coordinating their work. We have understood a little bit about machine learning, about artificial intelligence, about how is it a virtual assistant. Whatever we have understood, it seems to be awesome. Technology is awesome. There is no doubt about it. And this technology can take the personalization of learning to a higher scale, which is the required in Indian learning environment. But at the same time, it is insufficient to, on its own, to revolutionize a classroom experience. You know, students may be the focus of education, schools may be the providers of education, Technology may be the enabler of education, but teachers are the ones that make everything possible as they possess the power of relational situation that technology cannot match. So let's see how machine learning streamlines the education system as it proves to be a game changer because it makes normal operations very easy, very fast, and makes it efficiently.
let's see how its inclusion makes the whole learning environment convenient for the teachers as well as students not to forget other stakeholders now uh, just visualize the kind of work one has to do when you are teaching i am trying to include all those uh, duties and responsibilities that the teacher is doing and how machine learning can help the teacher let's just visualize a student gets enrolled class attendance has to be taken course content has to be prepared content delivery has to take place they need to be given uh, tests for that question papers are prepared and invigilation is to be done assessment is to be done grading is to be done the data has to be compiled then data has to be analyzed and on that basis future course of action has to be decided have all these ideas in mind on the basis of that it will be easier to understand how machine learning is so 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 helpful to begin with student enrollment it is a repetitive activity each year and it makes sense if a machine is doing this work how will the machine do there is a software called chatbot it's an artificial intelligence software it's a kind of technology that treats language as a sequence of symbols in pattern matching or based on distribution and frequency of keywords and on that basis it formulates responses to the questions an integrated chatbot chatbot can streamline the entire process of student enrollment teachers need not do anything they are free staff is also other staff is also free from this repetitive administrative work and it deserves to be automated and so many companies are already doing it and if it is to be free if it is to be automated the teachers and the administrative staff is going to be free and they can devote that time for a quality work so one can have student enrollment by using chatbot as a software uh, artificial intelligence software one can apply predictive analytics predictive analytics is an area of statistics which helps in predicting you know those who have studied statistics little bit must be knowing about correlation and regression and there are so many other tests to be done so on the basis of statistics <clears throat> one can extract information from data and use it to predict trends and behavior patterns that can be applied to any type of data for any unknown event whether it is in the past in the present or future so one can use predictive analytics software and that is microsoft azure machine learning studio it is being used in india uh, so one can use it and one can analyze attendance record test results predict probable student performance or likely dropouts in future so that timely action can be taken not only this customized learning it is very much important machine learning has a great great potential to assist teachers and is very flexible enough to cater to the individualized requirements of all the students once again make use of algorithm one can find out how the student is consuming the information this machine learning allows the learner to move ahead only after he has truly grasped the previous content 
this process ensures that no student is overlooked or left behind it allows the teachers to individually monitor students help them in those areas where they are deficient this method is in sharp contrast with the traditional educational methods which focuses on one size fits all management where everyone in the class is taught in the same way how do we do this customized learning moodle is the best best open learning system i have used it i have tried it i have found it one of the best open source learning management system one must use moodle to have customized learning not only that to have customized learning you need to create a smart content what do we mean by a smart content content which is specific content which is measurable content which is actionable content which is realistic it is very very useful to have a smart or customized and interactive course you and graphic creators and editor softwares available one can use either of them or one can also use content management system one can also use learning management system like moodle to make your content smart smart enough to cater to the needs of the learners content technologies in corporation is another artificial intelligence research and development company using deep learning they are developing and create customized learning materials which include textbooks chapter summaries multiple choice tests and so on and so forth so customized learning creating smart content and uh, analytics of the content done whatever content you have developed its analytics is possible and one must get it done once again is the azure machine learning studio or ibm watson explorer which can analyze your content what does it mean analyzing the content it determines whether the quality of the content meets the applicable standards as given by the board or the university or it also analyzes whether the content taught to the students compiles complies with the intellectual ability of the learner so and how do they do it there the computers deep dive into the data sift through millions of pieces of content make connections draw conclusions that enables the teachers to make a customized lesson plan and determine the best method in which students can learn so so far as content is concerned smart content analytics of content so far as learning is concerned customized learning now one can so for interactive tutoring system you know when the learner memorizes things or takes a reasoning test reads a book or listens to the lecture it seems that his learning uh, the learning has taken place it seems that he can use his logic and uh, do well but all these activities are same as doing nothing doing nothing i'll repeat it's a shallow learning one needs to have a deeper learning and deeper learning is possible only when it is interactive it is possible when it is uh, when you can uh, you know uh, have its application unless you are able to apply unless you are able to develop certain 
analytical skills while applying because the moment you apply any concept you have to analyze it analytical skills you have to decide it decision making skills you have to predict something and so many other communication skills so many skills gets developed automatically so application of the concept is very important interaction with the learner is equally important when one is doing this kind of a learning only then we see that deep learning has taken place simply reading a book is not going to make any difference you may read book you may not understand it that's not the point so here also if you are doing this kind of a job intelligent tutoring system plays their role if you are using the technology because these provide customized instructions which is a benefit to the learners it delivers learning material adapted to the child's proficiency level the learning style the pace of learning you know uh, if you have done any online course you come across uh, built in pop up questions which are tailored to students and increase interactivity and such kind of activity also catches the students attention or comprehension and one can appropriately design the remedial instructions it is there in almost all the uh, uh, you know platforms but great gaussian is another software which can be used for predictive models to improve the student performance yes it is a pain in the neck evaluating answer sheets is a pain area for the teachers and many institutions many entities today are moving towards on screen evaluation system if you remember cbse also had introduced on screen evaluation system it is very much time saver as it auto calculates the scores and it also makes sure that all the pages have been evaluated so it saves logistical cost of handling the physical answer sheets and also results are processed within no time so answer sheet evaluation is also possible using technology if you have appeared on uh, face to face tests but if you are appearing for online test it's proctored online assessment remote proctoring it's a new technique which has come up in order to simplify the online invigilation process because it monitors the candidate through video and audio streaming even face recognition is there so students can appear for their exams from any location classroom or home system is able to invigilate a such exams remotely using remote proctoring it uses web camera attached to the computer system to authorize remote students and many universities are moving towards adopting this kind of an assessment and it is because it simplifies the complete examination process so whether examination is face to face or whether it is online invigilation is taken care of by technology so assessment has to be done once it is evaluated and everyone knows it is not so difficult when the uh, answer sheets are assessed grading is provided uh, you know you have to feed data that uh, most of the teachers most of the schools are doing it you feed data and the result is compiled and you get the uh, final outcome but one has to remember yes technology is helpful because it simplifies the procedure it uh, uh, saves your time uh, but one has to remember that assessment is not possible only by machines only by machine learning algorithm because it is done on the basis of 
what kind of data is being fed. Some kind of human intervention is required because, and it is required on case to case basis. It is required because there are experiments to be done. There, uh, there is a project work to be evaluated and there are oral examinations. In such cases, technology alone cannot be of much help. So human intervention to some extent is necessary if it comes to assessment and grading of the learners. But at the same time, it is a time saver and increases efficiency as well as accountability of the complete grading system. Yes, once this is complete, feedback is provided. And once again, uh, machine learning can be used to provide feedback. And when it comes to feedback, <coughs> sorry, it means 360 degree feedback. That is, it is applied to both the students as well as the teachers. Students are, uh, the feedback to students is given using machine learning analytics on the basis of their academic and non-academic data. Teachers, <coughs> feedback to teachers is given on the basis of teachers data relating to the subjects taught, the number of learners, the method of teaching, acceptance of the teacher by the learners and so on. And this kind of a feedback is beneficial for both students as well as teachers, because both can adjust themselves as per the feedback and provide a better learning environment. So, yeah, this I've already talked about, that it uh, predicts students' performance when I was discussing uh, predictive analytics to be done. Uh, so it's a repetition. So in totality, machine learning supports teachers in every possible manner. I have just discussed the way it helps right from the student enrollment till the assessment, grading, and prediction of the future performance, machine learning takes care of every activity. It makes educators very efficient, and it helps the educators to complete multiple tasks, whether it is attendance, whether it is assignments, whether it is course content, whether it is lesson plan, whether it is classroom management, whether it is scheduling, whether it is testing, whether it is paper setting, whether it is a mark sheet or uh, compiling the complete result or tracking the complete performance or predicting the future performance of the student. Not only that, teachers can also have access to the data at one place. So these are all routine jobs provided few which require creativity. So these jobs, when taken care of by the machines, educators can focus their effort towards creativity, towards course development, towards creating quality teaching and skill development. So that, and it is important, it is important because it requires human touch and machines are not sufficient to make a positive change in the students alone. Yes, plagiarism. One every day comes across plagiarism. Excuse me, um, Poonam, um, yes? your time was up uh, about five minutes ago. So if you can wrap up, we need to yeah, go to the next. Yeah, I just wrap up within five minutes, next five minutes. No, that's too much. No, one minute. Two minutes? Yeah, one, one minute. minute. One minute. Okay. Please, thank okay. you. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, so many softwares are available which can take care of all these activities. These are so many softwares available. One can pick up one, few, or all of them. 
and uh, machine learning has a global reach so many countries have developed research facilities stem education have created dedicated public offices and increased public funding for that but it is a matter of concern for india because half of the uh, population is below 25 and there is a shortage of 1 million teachers though gross enrollment ratio has increased but there are poor learning outcomes so need of the hour is to have technology there are so many factors that have led to low uh, retention low uh, learning outcomes uh, i'm not going to the details it has become a global uh, in digital market has become global and is uh, growing at a rate of 30 percent so far as india is concerned india can adopt so many kind of learning tools adaptive intelligent interactive and so on and so forth so country has taken few initiatives and have created smart content microsoft and pearson are doing wonderful job uh, school uh, in school curriculum uh, artificial intelligence has been incorporated swim has been uh, introduced by the government and all other things are there uh, not only individual institutions but individuals are also uh, doing their uh, best this uh, this is the teacher who is doing uh, are teaching artificial intelligence in a remote village of uh, andhra pradesh so thank you so much i would just like to end up by saying that though india uh, has a shortage of teachers and there is a requirement of massification of indian education system technology can solve this problem and every teacher must adopt personalized learning must learn machine learning so that both can be integrated to have a positive outcome thank you so much thank you poonam and i want to tell you that you can share the powerpoint and you can share more information on the moodle on moodle for teachers in the uh, conference area under your webinar there is a discussion form so please go there and add your um, powerpoint and I want to thank everybody for joining us. We'll see you at the next session in a couple of minutes. Thank you.